has uh, mentioned that this topic comes uh, many time in your exam as a viva question. Sometime can come as a small theory questions, but more important is uh, how does this knowledge of biofilm help you in managing periprosthetic or peri implant infection? And uh, how do you know that the difficulties because of this uh, you face in diagnosing in uh, in treatment of these infections so uh, uh, melin you 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 want to come live you want to unmute yourself yes sir, yes sir okay yes sir okay melin welcome how are you i'm fine sir how Good. are you sir where are you where are you working melin so I'm doing, I'm PG third year from Sharda University. Sharda, okay, okay. So you're, you're ready for your final exam? Yes, sir. Actually, today was my first pre-prof exam also. All right, <laughs> okay. So have you heard of this term, biofilm? Yes, sir, I have. Okay, so w what is your understanding of biofilm? Just in a lay, uh, lay term, don't ask. Exactly. Uh, it's not a viva. Just you. Do you understand what you mean by biofilm? The so biofilm is a formation of a layer uh, of glycosaminoglycans over the implant, due to which the whatever antibiotic treatment we give, the bacteria are resistant to those antibiotics, and uh, uh, yep. that much only yep. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, and that resistance is because of what? So, because of this bio, biofilm synthesis only, I mean, there is a covering, there is a cell covering over the bacteria because of those bio, these biofilms, and that's why they are not able to attack these bacteria. So, what does this? So, let's say this is your uh, um, organism. Let's say this organism, which is a free-floating organism. And there is another organism which is not free floating here. And there's an implant here. And this organism attached to this implant and form a layer around it. Is that what you understand by biofilm, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, so uh, it you, you, mostly you're right. This, uh, this glycolix or the, uh, the covering it has formed around it is one of the reason that the bacteria can't attack it. But there are other reasons also why biofilm is uh, so important that neither bacteria nor uh, the phagocytic cells of the human body can attack it. So we will discuss that a bit more detail today, okay? Okay, so, uh, and why it comes important in the practical sense is that if you got to say infection of your implant, then you don't know whether uh, I should, uh, first of all, whether it is infected or not, sometimes multiple culture are negative, and then you need to know why these are negative. Then even if you got your diagnosis right, then you have to understand, should I uh, just do a washout or should I take out the implant? Should I put external fixator on it? Should I just give suppressive antibiotics? So these all are the questions you ask when you come with a possible uh, peri implant uh, infection, isn't it? Yeah. And yes, those sir. those questions are sometimes difficult practically to uh, answer those questions. But in the exam, especially, you need to understand the concept of biofilm, and then you will be able to answer them, not only in the exam, probably in your day-to-day -day practice, also understand why these are important questions and why biofilm is an important aspect to understand, okay? So that's what we will try to deal with. And same with the, and that is for fracture fixation implant, and same with if you've got a prosthesis in, and then you've got an infection around the prosthesis, A, it is very difficult to diagnose it, so diagnosis is difficult. And do, second is the treatment is very difficult. And to decide what treatment, should we just do suppressive antibiotics? Should we do a, a implant retention procedure? And should we do an exchange? Should we do single stage? Should we do double stage? All these questions come. And the theory behind all these is this concept of biofilm. 
okay? And that concept we will try to understand. So the first thing to understand is that when you have a bacteria which is freely uh, swimming or a single bacteria, can you see, let's say this is your bacteria, okay? And this, is, this bacteria when it's freely swimming in the blood or freely lying in the tissues, do you know what we call this bacteria, Milan? Are you still there, Milan? Hello. Hello. Yes, yes sir. Yes. And plank, plank, planktonic bacterial cells. Yeah. So it is called. It's already written there. It's called free or swimming or not. So if a single bacteria which is freely floating, then that's called a planktonic. Yeah. What planktonic? And what if these bacteria are all clumped together? the colony of these bacteria, if they clung together, is called sessile bacteria. Okay? Yeah, like you have pedunculated and sessile um, osteochondroma. So these are sessiles, uh, which are all forming a colony. Okay, so first thing you need to re remember that if the bacteria is the planktonic forms, then there are a couple of things which can easily be done. First, the, the white cells, which consist of your granulocytes and your lymphocyte and macrophages, they can all uh, work as a defense mechanism and can attack it. So let's say this is your macrophages there. This macrophage, if it is free floating, can easily eat this bacteria. And if you give antibiotic, let's say this is your molecule of antibiotics you've given, yeah? let's say this is a CAF molecule, this can also easily kill this bacteria on its action, okay? So the planktonic bacteria are easy to be killed both by antibiotics and easy to be dealt with the macrophages, okay? But when the bacteria actually modify itself and form a colony, so rather than having this bacteria, what will be this bacteria called? Planktonic bacteria. Planktonic, yeah. So this will be called a planktonic bacteria. And what will be the group of bacteria called? Sessile bacteria. So when the planktonic bacteria attach to an implant, then first it becomes a sessile colony and then it secretes some extracellular. So they are all cells and they have to secrete some extracellular material or extra extracellular matrix, ECM, which normally consists of polysaccharides, but sometimes bit of protein and bit of DNA bits there. This becomes a biofilm. Yeah, can you see what, how biofilm is formed? Yes, sir. Yeah, when a planktonic bacteria attach to a surface and secrete an extracellular matrix to cover it, it become a planktonic. From planktonic, it become a sessile. From sessile, it become a biofilm. Yeah, you yes, understand sir. that? Yeah. Yes, so, what is the definition of a biofilm? If somebody called you, can you read that definition for me? A community of bacteria attached to a surface surrounded by a self-produced extracellular matrix. Okay, so three things here. First, it has to be a colony. That means more than one. Yeah, or sessile. Yeah, yes. then extracellular matrix and then a surface. You'll remember that? Yes, sir. Yeah, so a biofilm is a community Okay, this is very important. I mean, they have to be together, yeah? Or bacterial attached to a surface. So another thing is it has to attach a surface. It may not be necessarily an implant. It can attach to even the biological surface. Sometimes chronic osteomyelitis or chronic ulcer also are biofilm, yeah? Surrounded by a self-producing extracellular matrix. Okay, will you remember these three bits of uh, definition? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Now let's explore this a bit more. What are the 